Welcome to the Redlands Coast Business Show, a naturally wonderful place to live and a great place to do business. Featuring local business successes and visionaries, bringing tips, tricks and inspiration to you. The podcast that embraces your local business community. And here's your host, Tony Curl. Hey there, it's Tony Curl here and welcome to episode 34 of the Redlands Coast Business Show, where once again we're going to be speaking to an amazing Redlands Coast business. I just want to send out a thank you to all the feedback uh, that we've been having since we've returned in 2022 and really pleasing to see businesses reaching out to appear on the show. I'd like to thank you all for that. So if you are interested in being interviewed on the podcast, p- podcast please go to redlandscoastbusiness.com.au and uh, send us a message and we'll be more than happy to have a chat with you. Today's guest is an amazing and an inspirational lady. Her name is Samantha Rosewarn from Blue Giraffe Building Design and Homewares. Now, she initially established this business back in 2010 after a working career working in larger architectural firms. But she moved away from that large corporate ethos and went into what she calls a more realistic beat in sync with her own design ethos and the realities of a young family. She now takes on smaller design projects focused around residential work, something which she is incredibly passionate about. Now, she's also a young lady with a mission. She's got a mission and a social purpose that is absolutely inspirational. And I cannot wait to share Samantha's story with you. So after a word from our sponsor, please welcome Samantha Rosewarn to the Redlands Coast Business Show. The Redlands Coast Business Show is brought to you by Tomorrow's Best Leaders. Increase your chances of business success by developing your leadership skills. Learn how to overcome the challenges and obstacles to grow your business. Gain more clients and profits by enhancing your skills for people connection. The Essentials for Growth Program. The Leadership Program for Small Business. It will help you grow your business and become a successful entrepreneur. Learn more at tomorrowsbestleaders.com. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the Redlands Coast Business Show. Please welcome Samantha Rosewarn from Blue Giraffe Building Design and Homewares. How are you, Sam? I'm good, Tony. How are you going? I'm fantastic. So we will get the elephant in the room out of the way. Technically, your business isn't on the Redlands Coast, but you've been uh, connected and associated with Redlands coast businesses and the business community for quite a long time so i i think um that entitles you to be on the redlands coast business show so tell me a little bit about blue giraffe building design well um i think i've known you actually from before blue giraffe building design even started because it was called blue giraffe studio before and I had the pleasure of meeting you when I wrote my first um, business plan. Yeah. Yeah. And um, sort of got my feet wet there. It feels like a very long time ago. And in actual fact, it probably was. Yeah. Um, my business um, started off when I started having kids and that. So it started off really slow, intentionally. And then... I would probably say in the last three years um, since my kids have both been in school age and off to school is when the business started um, thriving because I was working on it full time pretty much. Mm. So I would probably say three years, but in reality, it's probably more like 10. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and you've actually done a, if I remember rightly, you've actually helped out um, back in your um, home country of Sri Lanka doing some building design did I get that correct? Yes. So I I actually um, started my studies in Sri Lanka before I moved here to Australia and finished my degree and then stayed on. But um, yes, I've been 
in the game for a while and I do do some designs in Sri Lanka as well. Um, not much, but a little bit here and there. But mainly my work is local, which I love because yeah. um, I have a home office and I've had a home office before it was cool, before it was COVID. Um, and I think it um, gives me as a mom the flexibility to be the mom and also um, do what I love to do. Yeah, absolutely. And you do some beautiful work. So, so for the listeners and for anyone who's not aware, what is the fundamental process of a building designer? So there's a lot of words that get sort of mixed up in that whole discussion. So what is yeah. a building designer? What's the core business there? Well, um, to be honest, I don't know if most people know what a building designer is. So I studied and qualified in architecture. Um, and I worked for other companies in, in architecture. But when I started off on my own, I actually got a registration as a building designer because um, the upkeep of your qualifications is less. And um, as a sole practitioner, I guess I don't want to pass on all of the cost of just keeping my registration alive. Mm. Um, if somebody else was paying for it, it would have been different because I did work um, for different companies for about 10 years before I started off my own venture. But um, I still do the same job as an architect would, except the scale is smaller than what I could potentially do. But as a sole practitioner, I wouldn't be doing multi-story apartment complexes anyway. Yeah. I couldn't do it. So um, I'm doing what I love, which is mostly designing um, residential properties. And I touch on commercial things every so often as well. So schools and uh, restaurants okay. and health hubs and things like that. But the bulk of my work is residential. So I do renovations, extensions. Uh, brand new houses, um, all of that, and I love it. I love working with the people. So is there a style that you have, Sam, when it comes to building design? So we, we hear about some designers and architects that are focused or specialised in a certain area. How would you describe your styling? Um, that's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say I have a style necessarily. I think... At the heart of it, if the design is good and the plan and the flow of the property works, I think that's a good design. And I think from there, you can make a space look any way you want, but it still needs to work really well for the people living in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, personally, in my own home, I'm a little bit more modern and uh, industrial sort of style. That's my personal style. Yep. But I think when I take on other people's projects, it has to be their own style that comes through because they have to live there. Yeah. So it's a matter of designing the spaces in a practical sense so that everything works mm. and then you can make it look however you want to make yeah. it look. So, yeah. so people would come to see you prior to doing a renovation save. Is, is that your ideal client? Um, yes, because I cannot tell you the number of homes I've walked into where they've spent um, lots of money on renovating their kitchen or their bathrooms or whatever it is and then want to get something else fixed. And then I go look at the property and I go, ooh, would have been better if the kitchen was in a different spot. Mm. <laughs> so I think um, pre-planning is always really good because – even before you touch and spend any money, it's better to get an overall plan together and then work towards that plan, even if you do it in stages. So you may not have the money to yeah. renovate your entire home in one go, but at least if you know how things are going to end up at the end, mm -hmm. you plan for it and it's already in place. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'd probably tell clients. Great advice. And there's probably nothing worse than walking into a house and seeing the the kitchen that was renovated in 10 years ago and then you go into the bathroom and that was renovated eight years ago it's got no connection with yeah. with style or, or or you know that that whole aspect of alignment you then have 
business uh, bedrooms or there's been attack on uh, and it, it's just disjointed I would imagine so it is it is and it's in and I think the way um any good designer would design is you just gotta from because I have clients that come and tell me oh we want to put a door here or we want to put a bedroom here or whatever and I, what I say is don't tell me those things because all of that will fall into place when we do the overall design because there has to be a flow as to how you come into a home, how you use the home, even down to things like how you're going to take your rubbish out of your kitchen to your bin. Mm. You know, all of those things are thought of when a design is being yeah. done. So it's not just a matter of um, plonking a space wherever it is. There's a lot of thought that goes into um, how it's placed and also even which direction you're facing. Like, you know, you don't want your bedrooms facing west, but then if you've got a view on your west, how do you tackle that? So there's various elements that you sort of take into account when you're designing a mm. space. So if someone's extending, for example, and wanting to create that extra bedroom in their mind, that's all it is. Um, the preferred approach is we want to extend and increase our size. Is that the way that they should approach it? And then the plan falls in place with what we do with the space that's available. Have I nailed it? Sure. For sure. But it's also about making sure you tell your designer everything that you want to achieve. Even if in a very far off dreamland you want to put put in a pool or a granny flat or any of those things um, and you may not envision doing it for the next five years, mm. you should still tell the designer so that then we've got an opportunity to plan for it all and when you do add on those things, everything else is still going to work really well. Like if if you're building a house, you I mean we did that in our own house. We built our house. We didn't have that cash to put in the pool right at that point and we did the pool three years after yeah. but we'd pre-planned for it all so we know how do you get from the pool to a shower or you know all the little wet feet that go along with it and it's just little things but when you're living in it day to day mm. it makes a big difference and I'm I, self-confessed I'm a little bit OCD so I like organization <laughs> I like process I like having a system in place yeah. to do things so um i i feel a lot better when things work <laughs> i can just imagine so you've also tacked on homewares into blue giraffe is that so tell me a little bit about what that means for you now um well i should have probably mentioned a while ago my building design business is profit for purpose so a lot of the money, like the profits that we earn from um, the building design mm. business, we actually go to sponsor children in Sri Lanka. Um, and because Sri Lanka is where I'm from, yeah. I lived there till I was 23. So I have uh, quite an engraved roots in Sri Lanka still, and I go back all the time. Yeah. Um, and I felt that was, it gives me a good reason to work harder, I suppose. Like it's beyond us. It's beyond whatever mm. we need or our sustenance. We're sort of helping somebody else through the business. So, um, and then when COVID hit, um, if anyone knows anything about Sri Lanka, it is it's a beautiful country and there's lots of um, artists and artisans who create these amazing homewares like terracotta, items and um, I suppose woven baskets and various things like that all the homewares and um, a lot of them would sell to tourists yeah. and as you well know with COVID everything shut down the whole world shut down so um, all the stories I kept getting back from Sri Lanka was how these people who used to produce all these amazing things now have nowhere to sell them mm. or no one to sell it to. Yeah. So I had this crazy idea to, <laughs> to set up um, a e-commerce platform where I could import uh, goods from Sri Lanka. And the idea is there is zero negotiation in terms of purchase price. Yeah. So whatever they sell for is what we buy for. And nothing is made in factories or anything like that. So a lot of the, the products are actually made in people's homes. They're all handmade. 
Um, so, you know, there's no two pieces that are going to be exactly alike. So there's no um, exploitation of labor. There's uh, none of that bad stuff that go with, I suppose, a lot of factory made products that come out of some Asian countries, I suppose. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we set up the business so that we'd import homewares from Sri Lanka, sell it here, and then the the people back there would gain a reasonable income that they would have normally pre-COVID. Okay. And um, I suppose in terms from my end, I feel like I am giving back a little bit and helping support some communities, but also exposing and opening up the beautiful things you, that are available in Sri Lanka, which... I mean, you, you see stuff from Bali and Thailand and things like that here in Australia, but you don't really, you rarely see th- things from coming out of Sri Lanka. Yeah. So um, I feel that's pretty awesome as well. Yeah, it feels like there's another, it may not be as clearly defined as a profit for purpose, but there's a real purpose behind what it is that you're doing, Sam. So I think that that's incredibly admirable so let's uh talk a little bit about the redlands coast business community so i know you're connected with the bayside women in business you you've um you put your hand up last year i I believe to be on the the committee of the redlands coast chamber of commerce so what um how have you found being involved with the redlands coast business community and what are some of the the things that you've seen firsthand with it I think um, for me personally, as a sole business owner, it's hugely important to connect to the community and have that support structure around us. I think um, it's very easy to give up on your business and your dreams because it does get just too hard. Mm. Um, But going to the events that are put on by um, places like the Redlands, they I think it inspires you, it it guides you in areas that, you know, you may need assistance in. And it's just a huge learning curve. And then also the people that you meet. Um, I don't know for me, but um, you wouldn't believe this, but I am a little bit of an introvert and I find (laughs) it very difficult to make new friends. (laughs) But um, I find going to these events really helps me to know other business owners and and it and it does make me feel better knowing they're all doing this together and yeah. you know you're not just all out there on a ledge sort of struggling but um i think it is quite comforting to know that there are people out there that and are so happy to reach out and help as well when they can yeah. so yeah that's what's up yeah yeah the um the redlands coast business community is is a very warm community i found and that um they are genuinely there's a lot of genuinely caring people within that community and i know that that's really important for for business owners and especially as you're talking through the sole practitioners the sole traders get a pretty tough stick at times you know they they do a lot of you know we love our home offices but we also love talking with people and you know, I think one of the funny things that has happened with me, especially through COVID and doing a lot more work on screens, is I think my introversion, funnily enough, everyone's going to say, Tony, girl, an introvert. Yeah, me, the introversion has sort of increased with myself and it's because you don't have that as strong a personal connection that we can have when we're out with with people or working with people so it can be a real challenge so completely agree yeah what's been from a business sense um sam what's been the most challenging thing that you've encountered starting and developing your business to where it is today um i think my business is probably different to a, a few others that are around I very rarely have repeat customers <laughs> just because of the type of business that it is. Like if you wouldn't renovate your house, you know, yeah. a couple of years apart um, and need my services. So whereas say if you're an accountant or a coach, mm. you've got people that you sign up for and they're going to keep coming back to you every month. Yeah. 
whereas with my situation, I feel like I'm constantly looking for more clients. But um, I think um, doing all of the networking and people getting to know us as people as well and feeling comfortable and confident enough in what we do yeah. is a huge selling point. In term, and, and we don't do that to sell. I think we're just being ourselves. Mm. But I think it's an important connection to make with people just so they know you. Because there's so much um, deception, I feel, out there that you just don't know. You're just worried, oh, my gosh, am I going to get played out? Are they going to do a good job? Mm. All of the questions that go around. And if the trust is already there, it's a little bit easier, I feel, to connect with people. And I think it just takes time yeah. to figure out what works for me as an individual business and you as an individual business because I don't think there's one set formula yeah, yeah. Of how you run a business or how you run it well. I think you just sort of trudge your way through and fall into a system that works and get the guidance that you need to. But I think what I found most difficult at the start yeah. was feeling that pressure like I needed to find the next client. Where do I get the next client, you know? all of these sorts of questions. But thankfully, I'm, I think, over that little bit of a hump because now 90% or probably even more of my business comes from referrals mm. and, um, you know, people contacting me. I'm not looking for customers. And I think that's a fabulous place to be in. Mm. And um, But I can say I did work hard to get to this spot as well. Like, I don't think you can... It, it doesn't just happen overnight, yeah. for sure. Yeah. That word of mouth referral is absolutely crucial in just about every single business sense. And that only comes from being good at what it is that you do. So you really want people to become your raving fans. And, mm. you know, a lesson for all businesses out there, if you're really good at what it is that you do, people will come to you because of that expertise and that that um, specialty that we we all bring so Sam tell me about um, your relationship with failure have you ever felt that you were failing or have you ever been close to thinking now I've got to do something else I don't think I can do anything else at this point <laughs> but um, I think absolutely failure uh, you feel it Sometimes on a daily basis, yeah. just maybe not even in business, you feel like um, you're failing maybe um, at life or as a mom or as a wife or whatever it ends up being. I think it's just so many things that we balance as individuals in terms of your home life balance and work balance and things like that. Um, I remember... When I started off in the business, um, my husband and I used to have these discussions <laughs> about um, is the giraffe just going to keep going? When do we put a draw a line in the sand going, all right, now you've got to get a real job? Um, but there, I, I think I fought really hard okay. um, to keep the business going. And I'm so glad now standing where I am that I did that because um, I know there's lots of people out there who would do life way better than I do, but I don't think I can manage a full-time architectural job in the city and also have a family mm. as well. I think that would be way too much pressure for me. And that was one of the reasons I stepped out into this journey of starting my own business yeah. was because I wanted that balance because my kids are still fairly young. Um, and I don't want to completely miss out on yeah. their lives either and have a one or the other type situation. Yeah. So this has worked out really well for me. But, um, I mean, it may not be for everyone else, but I, I, I think grit is a huge part of running your own business. If you don't have that, yeah, yeah, uh, it would be tough. Great advice. But yeah, I'm sure I've failed many times in many, many things over the years. Yeah. Um, but I think the grit is what keeps us going and also knowing the reason for what we do and having that passion because if there wasn't a greater purpose, um, mm. it would be a bit 
tougher to keep going, I feel. Mm, absolutely. It's, um, and uh, I think you're a real epitome of what grit and um, is all about, you know, and it's about finding that balance. It's about finding that purpose within your business. I, I think you've got it in spades, Samantha. So, which is always a, a really positive um, thing to take away. No matter where we feel we are in our business journey, just the fact that we're still going and still moving and still taking one step forward is better than many others who've never even progressed past. I think I've got an idea. Um, tell me, where did Blue Giraffe come from, the name? I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, yes, yeah, so Blue Giraffe, where did the name come from? Um, it was me, well, I love giraffes to start off with. Um, why wouldn't you love a giraffe? I mean, it's completely reverse from nature I think it's just one of those real oddball creatures and I feel like I might be the same so um, I think we're a good fit it was just something quirky and off kilter and surprisingly a good marketing tactic because people <laughs> don't ever seem to forget the name blue giraffe when they hear yeah. it so um, yeah it was just one of those weird things I may have had too many glasses of wine when I named my business <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay sometimes that's when our best business ideas will actually come out when we've had maybe just one or two on a friday and we're reflecting back it's also some pretty stupid ideas can come from that but anyway when they work we'll take it so so sam in a perfect world what do you believe is needed to help support the growth of business uh, small business i think um Hmm, tricky question. I think there are many resources that we can pull on. Um, I think the councils offer so many different mentor services and advice and platforms mm. for small businesses that, to be honest, we don't know a lot of what's out there that's available to us, the resources available to us. And I think yeah. um, it would be a really good stepping stone for any business to utilize all the resources that are out there. Uh, yeah. Another definite thing I would say is if you have the ability to get on board with the business coach, I find that sort of propels your business to another mm -hmm. level because it's like getting a personal trainer for your business. I think I was always very scared about that concept of uh, a business coach and I just think Ooh, really do I need it but um, I worked with one for a short spell and I think that just sort of really drives you and motivates you and gives gives you sort of a tunnel vision sometimes because mm. you, you get caught up in running the business working on you know finding yeah. the clients, doing the paperwork, doing all of those things, you lose track of um, how you could potentially grow your business or just getting fresh eyes on yeah. um, how you might do things better. And I yeah. would say that's definitely something I would recommend to anyone mm. doing this thing that we do <laughs> to get some help. And yeah. also... I think making those connections locally um, because building our little community, um, it's sort of a little bit of a, a safe haven for all of us. And you catch up on a, on a morning and have breakfast together at the events and things like that. And it just really builds your connection because sometimes we do isolate a little bit and um, mm. get so busy in what we're doing. I think it's still a very important part to connect back into your community and build those relationships. So yeah. that's probably a few of the things that I'd say. Excellent answer. And and once again, just like getting that fresh set of eyes looking at what you're doing and or helping you or supporting you or encouraging you or making you accountable, all of these things um, will help 
business grows. So whether it's yeah. your accountant, whether it's a coach, whether it's a consultant, whether it's someone you catch up with for coffee, as long as they're playing a role. Yeah. You shouldn't meet someone for coffee unless this, you're sort of helping each other. I, I always believe. I know when I started the business, Sam, there was a large amount of coffees <laughs> that were had with without any outcome for either party and, yeah. you know... Um, business can be social, but um, we can also potentially min waste some of our time, our valuable time now that in, you with that. that um, I think I'd add one more thing to my list of to-dos is yep. um, get people around you who know what they're doing. I think mm -hmm. as business owners, we think, oh, I can do everything just because I don't want to spend that money and get the help that I need. But I am all about getting anyone else to do the things that I don't want to do that are not my core business. So yeah. I've got people handling my social media, my accounting, my bookkeeping, um, everything that I can outsource that isn't design, I will outsource it. So mm. I think... Um, each profession, people spend a lot of time and energy mastering their skills. Yep. And me as one person cannot master all of those skills. And really, why do, why do you want to? You wouldn't yep. do. So I think leaning on the professionals to do little bits around you eases that pressure and then you get to excel at what you're good at. Mm, great advice. Um, what's the vision for you moving forward, Sam? Vision for me moving forward um, is probably to get a little bit more sleep. <laughs> um, but um, I think keep the business going. I'm still trying to – the homewares business is only just launching, so yeah. I'd like to grow that to a point where it's comfortably ticking away as well. But I think I'm at a little bit of a sweet spot now where I've got – enough clients to keep me going I've got really good clients um, and the whole concept behind um, both of my businesses is to give back to other uh, to mainly to the communities in Sri Lanka and I think we just keep growing that because we've got three kids that we sponsor um, in Sri Lanka at the moment and every time the business keeps growing we increase that number um, and the, the communities we support. Um, and we do a lot of projects just even here locally working with the Redlands and, um, you know, for the homeless with Rosies and things like that. So I think that's a lot. I, I, I would like to spend more time on things that I'm passionate about um, yeah. in, a, in a voluntary sense as well. So yeah. I think when I get to that point, I'll be really happy. And, and once again, that whole concept of purpose just keeps coming out in our conversation, which I think is quite amazing. So, um, Samantha, if someone was listening to this and says, I need to connect with Samantha and Blue Giraffe Building Design, how do they do that? Um, you can hop online and type in Blue Giraffe Building Design. And hopefully, if my if the lady handling all of my SEOs has done a job well, um, I should pop up on your screen. And I'm always ready for a chat and just go through stuff over the phone, talk about what you need doing, and when I can help you out. Mm. And she's obviously doing a great job because I just typed in blue giraffe and you are number one in the there organic search term. So there you go. Getting the right people to do the right jobs. <laughs> yeah, once again, just a reiteration. That's a yeah. reinforcement. And I can also see you Google my business. So that's yeah. uh, pretty <laughs> all working for you. Sam, it's been a pleasure as always speaking with you. Thank you so much for your investing in coming on the Redlands Coast Business Show. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. And now, it's time for Tony's Two Cents. Now, there's a couple of key points that I just really want to elaborate on. One was when I asked Samantha about her own design style. And yes, while she does have a personal style, her own personal preference, she told us that it's all about the customer. And it's all about the customer's flow in the house. The level of detail that Sam goes to in designing 
the the house, the renovation, the work that's going to best suit or best uh, fit the customer's brief is quite amazing. And it's really a major reason why she now drives much of her business through referrals. It's also so heartening to see a business focused on the greater good. Um, Sam's approach to supporting the less uh, advantaged kids in Sri Lanka is heartwarming. And she's now developing her new business on the homewares in support of artisans, creatives in Sri Lanka. I think that that is simply amazing. And of course, we wish Sam all the best in both her business and social good endeavours. And of course, if you want to connect with Samantha, her links are, as always, are in the... The Redlands Coast Business Show is brought to you by The Essentials of Growth, Small Business Leadership Program by Tomorrow's Best Leaders. Developing your leadership is essential for your small business growth. The success of your small business is largely dependent on the level of your leadership that drives it. Leaders are responsible for productivity, employee morale and innovation. And this program provides the tools to help leaders grow their business. This program will take you on a journey to help you lead, engage, connect, lead your personal journey to build leadership skills to help you be more productive and effective. And as you develop your self-leadership skills, you'll be more energised and driven to achieve your goals. Engage. Your leadership skills enable you to build the best team that you can. Empowering and developing them is a key aspect to building the best business performance. Connect. The way we connect with others, build relationships with our clients and our team. Building your leadership helps you connect and build trusted relationships. It's designed for your busy lifestyle with access to micro-learning and activities monthly that drive the best possible outcomes in the most effective use of your time. And it's all brought together with a personalised coaching session monthly. Learn more today at tomorrowsbestleaders.com. I hope to see you there. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Redlands Coast Business Show. We hope you found it a valuable resource for you and your business journey. Tune in next time for more local business stories. We'll see you then.